The next form of welding that we're going to be doing is using filler rod to weld these two together. So the first one was just fusion welding, letting the metal itself melt together. This one we're going to be adding a little bit of metal to it to fill in uh, our gaps, maybe give it a little bit more strength, a little bit more material in there. I find this is actually easier to get my puddle started and control. Let's do this. So once again, light your torch. Just a little bit. I want a nice little flame. I'm going to increase the pressure until it's feathered again. Add my oxygen. I'm going to do my tack weld with my filler rod. By heating the two up together, to get it almost a puddle. I like to get this nice and hot before just sticking a cold rod on top of there. Just a quick tack. And do the same thing to the other end before it expands or contracts. Go evenly between your two pieces. Now it's getting kind of hot. I can tell it's about to go molten. I'm going to throw a little bit of filler rod in there. Just enough to hold it together. This one's not for strength. Now I'm ready to run my bead here. Now then, so just quickly before I do this, my filler rod here, I'm just using a very thin one. I've got two ends to this, one here and one here. If you notice, I've added a bend to it. I do that so I remember which is the cold end and which is the hot end. So my cold end, so I always know that if I grab here, I'm gonna be mostly safe, unless this thing is only three inches long. And this end, I'm gonna assume that it's hot. Don't go touch it. Don't go lick it. Don't go lick it. Please. All right, let's get back to welding. I'm gonna be wearing my gloves and I'm gonna be holding it like this. With my torch, I'm probably gonna be doing a very small circular motion and dipping this into the puddle kind of as I go forward. So you'll see me circle dip, circle dip, circle dip, circle dip, all the way along where I want my weld to be. Light it. Increase your acetylene until it's feathered. That black smoke goes away. Increase your oxygen until you have that nice little cone. And let's weld. Heat this up until it gets molten, and then we're gonna start adding our filler material. So I want to get that puddle started before I add filler material because I really want to make sure that the metal is melting, not just my rod. Here we go. Puddle's starting. I'm going to do circle, dip, circle, dip, circle, dip. There, I get a little bit more of a puddle going. There we are. And I just kind of circle, dip, maybe every one or two circles. Let this go forward. I'm going to stop there and we can take a look at it. Acetylene and then oxygen. So if I look closely at that, I see I have a very nice little, I have a nice weld on top. It's going to be strong enough. I can flip it over and see how the penetration is. Again, maybe not enough penetration. I think I'm going to have to add more heat. Let's continue this with some more heat. So again, let's get our puddle started. I'm just gonna continue from where we left off. And remember that your filler rod is gonna get shorter the longer you weld. Just be aware of where you're holding it. Okay, puddle has started. I'm gonna do a couple circle dip, circle dip, circle dip. My filler rod sometimes goes in between the flame and the metal. That kind of preheats it and then lets it drip into that little puddle. There we go, much nicer. I've increased the heat, or I increased the pressure. This is working lovely. Settling off, oxygen off. 
So not a bad weld. I'm a little bit rusty on this. I don't do this as often since I've been using a MIG welder, but I think this is going to be strong enough. Let's clamp it to a vise and smack it with a hammer and see how it holds up. Don't forget your safety glasses and be careful you don't hit your hand on this hot metal. So what does that tell me? If I look very closely at it, it broke off with very little effort. I got very little penetration and it was mostly just a surface weld. So that tells me that I need to have a bit more of a gap and add more heat to get through a piece of metal like that. Let's do it again. Start with my tacks just to hold it in place enough. Get it hot before you add your tack. That's just to hold it together. There's not going to be any real strength there. All right, let's heat this thing up. I turned up the heat. I'm going to add some bigger welds. I'm going to go a little bit wider and really try to penetrate this metal. All right, circle, dip, circle, dip. I'm gonna take my time, really get that metal melted through there this time. Careful of how close you are so you don't get any kind of dip or flashback. Adjust your grip on your filler rod now and then to make sure you're not getting too close to the metal with your fingers. Now we're nice and slow, nice big wide welds here. Acetylene, then oxygen to turn it off. Wait for that to cool for just a moment and let's flip it over. Lovely. So we have a lot more penetration coming through this one. Still not quite enough um, to make it extremely strong, but it might hold up better than the last one. So if you look closely at that, there's a little bit more penetration than there was before. You can see it more down on this side. Here, not so much. Well, this one's where we ended. We had the whole metal going really, really hot. Do not touch this. This will blister a lot. Let's flip this over and take a quick look at that. That's a decent weld. You can tell that it's uh, really curved into the metal a little bit more, kind of like this, like a scoop. I could go over it again if I wanted and add a bead on top of that, but let's see how strong this one is. It's clamped in, let's grab our hammer. That's much stronger than the first one. Let's hit it from both sides. So depending on its use, this would be a fine weld. I think we need to go get a bigger hammer. So we got an eight pound sledge. Let's try that one. Now it is bending a little bit, but the weld is still holding. Let's get a closer look at that. Not too bad, it's still holding up pretty good. Now just for fun, let's just break it. So once we are done welding, we need to turn off this whole setup. I'm going to start by purging the valves. So to purge the valves, I'm going to close my acetylene first, close that till it's tight. I'm going to roll back my regulator, the minus, or in this case, counterclockwise. I'm 
open my acetylene to make sure all the gas has left the acetylene valve. Empty. If you look close to that here, it'll be reading zero. Next, uh, oxygen. Turn it off all the way. Clockwise, good. We want to get this to be empty, reading zero. I'm going to turn my valve back all the way, counterclockwise. Open my valve. And this should be going down to nothing. Turn it off, wrap it up for everybody else. Put your striker away. Clean up your mess. And practice every day. So just to recap, this is how I do it with my classes. This is not necessarily industry standard, but this is what works well for us at a complete introductory level from grades eight to 12. Have an awesome day.